welcome to Faith and Friends. Did you see that? It was a brand new open. Yeah. Saw the helicopter drop eggs. Yeah. Natalie Grant Glad it was it. eggs and not frozen turkeys. That's Thanksgiving's I'm promotion. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed all of those things that we talked about. It sure is a lot of fun to be able to share the many exciting things that ministries around this area are doing right here on sharing that right here on Faith and Friends. We also hope you enjoyed last week's episode of Viral Truth. We're happy to be back with you this week as we get ready to say goodbye to April and hello to May. I say it every month. Is May a friend of yours? I'm saying... May is a friend of mine because the grass is green and the flowers are coming out and the sunshine is brighter and it just makes me happier. I always find it unique that you have April, May, and June, three months in a row, which also can be names of females. That's a good point. Or streets. As or streets. is the case in, in some Lima neighborhoods, different female names that I've noticed. That is true. There is a June Drive, I think. Somewhere. There you go. June Court. June Court, I think, is near my house. Well, a few notable <laughs> things taking place in May that you may want to be a part of. Saturday, May 7th, Prayer Flight Ohio is sponsoring a prayer, planes, and pancake fly-in at the Allen County Airport. Lisa Crump, who works with Shirley Dobson on the National Day of Prayer Task Force, will be the speaker. All are invited. The event, again, is May 7th from 8.30 a.m. till noon. Mother's Day, May 8th, and do you know a mom who would deserve this? Dr. Michael Carpenter of Dental Excellence in Napoleon announcing the first Mother's Day makeover contest. You're invited to nominate a special mom to win an Extreme Smile makeover. Extreme Smile. The winner will receive any restorative and cosmetic dentistry needed to make her smile healthy and beautiful, as well as professional hair, makeup, and a new outfit. To register, you need to visit happy-dentistry.com and be ready to share the story of why your nominee deserves an Extreme Makeover. Now that's going to be kind of neat. Deadline. You were smiling through that whole story. I was. The deadline is May 8th. Now, if I smile too much, people say, oh, her smile's too good. She doesn't need that. Well, let's no. jump into this week's show the way we always do with Scripture. It's our final week to focus on the character trait of perseverance. Ephesians 6, 16 through 18a tells us, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication. Certainly some, some very fiery imagery in that verse. You know, so often the Bible uses uh, imagery like that, it uses battle imagery, it uses, you know, taking up armor and defending yourself. And, and that all goes back to this idea we've been talking about all month long about perseverance. Yeah, and prayer and supplication, that's what it says at the end of the, the verse. We need to be fighting through on our knees in prayer and supplicating and bringing our requests before God uh, because we can't do it on our own. We need His help to get us through. Well, earlier this month, the village of Elida saw a major population boost for just two days as the Converge Youth Conference converged on the Elida Fieldhouse and the high school. It was the fourth year for this event, and Jennifer was there and quite simply says, it was amazing. It started with fun, laughter, and activity. And yes, there was plenty of all three all weekend long. But that's not what the Converge attendees are thinking about these days. They're thinking about this, and this, and this, and this. Worship, workshops, challenging keynote sessions, and an opportunity to give back. This is Converge 2016. A brand new location allowing for record attendance, this two-day event is now four years old. Converge, a youth conference for 8th through 12th graders that this year brought in attendees from all throughout Ohio and several neighboring states and even Texas. Matthew Ocker and the leaders from Evangelical United Methodist Church in Greenville brought 24 students. I think what makes Converge so special compared to other events is that there's that practical aspect of ministry, uh, the Love Lima um, initiative where kids are going um, all over the streets dispersing 70,000 pounds of food. Um, you know, not many events that you go to have quite that opportunity where kids can actively be a part of the ministry and seeing that they can go in their own communities and do the same thing. And after a Friday night filled with music, worship, and strong biblical messages, the schedule on Saturday did include that event, Operation Love Lima, 
groups of teens going out into the community to serve the people of Lima with nourishment, both the physical and spiritual kind. I've, I've worked with our teens here for, I think, three to four years now, and what I'm seeing in the society that's coming up and is there's a lot of self, uh, self, self, self. Kids are about what they can do, what they can touch, what they can get their hands on. I think this teaches them to sacrifice. It teaches them to look outside of what they see every single day within the walls of their school or within the walls of their home and realize that there's people outside of them uh, that need minister to, that, that need that connection from them. And it shows them that they can have a bigger impact than uh, just being kids, you know. Brand new this year to Converge was a downtown prayer rally. At 5 p.m. on Saturday, April 16th, Converge attendees and volunteers joined with individuals in the community to pray for our city, our country, our government, and our schools. Dave Williams from New Life Christian Center in Salina says Converge is an event that gives teens a reason to stand for Jesus. They have a purpose in this life, and they give, like, wow, I get to be a part of something. And that just... That just means more, you know, and Jesus said, I've come to seek and save the lost. And my my prayer is, and I believe that I speak for everybody, that they encounter God, they encounter the living God, and they become one with God. This year's main speakers were Billy Beecham, Todd Gongware, and Dave Edwards. 28 workshop speakers presented diverse topics, and four nationally known bands led the teens in worship and song. It was a weekend filled with prayers, praise, and turning lives over to Jesus for His glory. Converge 2016 is complete. Planning for Converge 2017 is already underway. Well, God is on the move. It was evident at the Converge conference, and it is also evident in this woman. Janelle Taviano of Unrained Ministries is here with us. She was most recently in Africa in February. But her ministry was birthed by God many years ago. It's been a long time since we've had Janelle here at TV44, and I'm excited to hear an update of what God is doing through Unrained Ministries. Let's go jump way back to 2008, how God even started this all at the beginning. I was at home taking care of my mother with brain cancer. Our son's a web designer. He designed our, our website of Unrained, and a pastor in Africa got a hold of it. Little did I know that there was a ring of 13 pastors that would scam Americans on their emotions to come. And I'm not an emotional person, but God laid, it was during a time of war where they would line families up and gouge the children's eyes, cut off their nose, their ears, their lips, go to the next child. And so that type of a war was going on. And so God tugged at me. I literally cried for these people. And uh, so I got a hold of, they asked me to come and speak. And they promised me 5,000 people. That would be like saying, we're going to have a crusade in Westminster of 5,000 <laughs> mm -hmm. people. So I called Billy Graham's association, asked him if it was safe for a white lady at 50 to go over by herself to this area. I had seen that their ministry had been in Katali. And he said, they said, Janelle, there's no place to house 5,000 people in that area. It is not safe. And so I went back to my office in my house and I prayed and God said, I'm either God or I'm not. And Stanley Tam gave me my ticket money and said, how does it feel to be an evangelist, Janelle? Mm -hmm. As he prayed over me and I went. So you went that first time, you went alone? Yep. You went alone. You mentioned already that a group of 13 pastors that were scamming people. Right. But yet God is bigger than scams. And right. he was starting something even bigger. Amen. And I, I didn't realize that they were scamming me until halfway through. So in 34 days, I had to get myself out of, I didn't have to, God got me out of mm -hmm. there. But that farm mentality said something wasn't right. And I realized what was going on, and yet 800 people got saved. I did speak to 5,000 people four nights in a row. Wow. And uh, God, God is real. So for many people, they would do that. They go over, they speak to 5,000 people, they come back, they move on with their life, and they've done their thing. Right. But for Janelle, God was saying, no, this is just the start. That's right. This is the beginning, and you have been in Kenya Every year since then, That's most right. recently in February, mm -hmm. God continues to move. That's right. And up to this day, uh, this year, over a thousand got saved. God, came, Jesus Christ came to seek and to save the lost. And so we're not going into Africa as white stallions. We're going in with the word of God, with the truth, which Africa is really corrupt, even spiritually. 
The pastors can speak like anybody that we know and you stand with your mouth open like you ought to write a book and yet they are not true to the Word of God. Hmm. And so our ministry is all about the truth of the Word of God. We're all about seeking and saving the lost, period. So tell me a little bit about how God is infiltrating the Word of God through Unrained right there in the, that in that area in Kenya, right? You're in right. Kenya? The, um, the terrorists are invading Kenya all the time, and so the government is buckling down on, on, uh, on faith-based ministries. And so we were forced to take seven churches under our wings pretty quick, or they'd close them down. Mm -hmm. And yet we don't trust the seven churches because we know the corruption. And, but yet God has given us those seven areas rurally. So I work in Spencerville, Allen East, we're all rural. And uh, we're taking the word of God. I work with Benson Simeu and he's my kid's age. So I, he's like mm -hmm. a son to me and he's true to the word of God. And so we are literally going out in these churches. We are, we are ministering to the needs of people, building huts, giving tarps to the homeless, giving them food, whatever the need is, we're meeting that to show how much Jesus Christ loves them right where they're at. Now, one way that God is using you is in the realm of medical needs. That's Tell me a little bit about how God has started Mm -hmm. building up a medical opportunity there. I was walking one year, uh, probably 2012, in a cornfield, literally over stalks, and this mother and her little boy was out there, and she was giving him 40 shillings, which is 40 cents about, to go to the doctor by himself because she could not afford to go with him, and he was like five years old. And I could see the frustration mm -hmm. in her eyes. And I looked at her and I said, what if we put a hospital right here? And I pointed over to the next field, and her eyes went like, oh my word. And that's when God called for the hospital. Our son Tug works with um, producing and, and promoting Christian concerts. And he had the opportunity to meet Bubba Watson for five minutes on a basketball court. And they wanted to do this event for a fundraising thing. And he, Bubba says, well, who would we give our money to? And Tug says, the only person I know is my mom. And so the next year, Bubba wrote a $104,000 check to Unrain Ministries. We put up a stoned 150-bed hospital in 2013, and that hospital still sits empty. Now, why, why would it sit empty? Why, what stopped the progress? I don't have any more Bubba Watsons. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know. I mean, I keep, uh, like I told you, I don't like to sell Girl Scout cookies. I'm not into marketing Jesus Christ. And so I just keep following his lead and I haven't been led to the right person, I guess. So what is the next step in that? What needs to yet be done in that hospital in the order hosp to make it mm -hmm. be functional? We have, we have it ready for plumbing. We have it ready for electrical. It, it's going to cost us $75,000 to get all the equipment in. It is, it is ready to go. It's just an empty shell and yet God let me two years ago lay in bed and hear wailing for two days. They hire people for a funeral a half a mile from where our compound is. And to hear, it's almost like a coyote, all continual, continual, continual. And I thought, God, why, did, why do I have to lay here and know that a half a mile away, a lady died because she couldn't afford? Over there, if you walk to the doctor's uh, door, if you do not have cash in hand, they will watch you die. They do not play games. We were sending money over for a lady with a huge goiter. And we are, the money, the process to wire money is crazy. And so the money was going to get to her on Monday and she died on Saturday. And this all sounds, but if you, if you would watch your grandmother die because there's no facilities, if you would watch your aunt die that, that's how personal it gets. So how would life change for these people if this hospital could become, I believe there could be not just physical healing, but spiritual mm -hmm. healing for uh, them as well. This, this hospital is gonna have its own pastor. And we already do Jigger Day where we take kids and soak them in ointment to get rid of the worms inside of the parasites in them. And then we follow up every child, we follow up spiritually. And so these people would come like groves because we're out there. We're in a rural area. 
uh, even doctors from the U.S. came and used our facility and left $4,000 cash because he said, you're on it. You see the need. This is what this area needs. And so the life changing is these people can't afford. They don't have a dollar. They, they can't even afford. They, they'll sell their, their daughters for a dollar for prostitution to feed their family. So they don't have the dollar to send them for physical help. And so this is so crucial to help them, but not only uh, medically. This, this is going to open up the kingdom of God. Why, it's like he's given us a wound that, that he, can, he can heal. All right, hold that thought. We are out of time for this show, but we need to hear more from Janelle. So stay with us. Be sure you watch in weeks to come. We're going to have Janelle back on to tell more about the story about this hospital. In the meantime, you need to go to unrained.com, and that's where you can find out more information about everything that Janelle is talking about now. We'll be right back after this. Earlier this month, P. Allen Smith was at the Nicewanger Performing Arts Center for their first Van Wert Blooms. A packed house enjoyed engaging ideas as we're entering the gardening season. Well, every Saturday, you can get some of your own inspirational ideas from P. Allen Smith's show Garden Style, which airs right here on TV 44 at 2 p.m. on Saturdays. On that show, he also offers some cooking ideas, and that's what brings us to our Lost Creek Care Center. Stop in the kitchen today. Our recipe involves just five ingredients plus water. And here we go. You guys are super excited, aren't you? Our resident chef's back in the kitchen. For, I get how are the we going to mess knife. this one up? Well, today we are making pickled onions and I've got two taste testers over here who aren't so sure about the word pickled. I don't really know how to Maybe cut we're going to show you that it's better than you expect. Andy's already starting with the onion. You told me it might take a while, right? And so while he's cutting, let's take a look at what the ingredients are going to be that you're going to need today. One red onion, as Andy is working on already. Right? Also so, yeah. going to need Get one tablespoon back, yeah. of sugar, two tablespoons of salt, yeah. a half a cup of red wine vinegar, so half yeah. to a three <laughs> quarters a cup of cold water, like and some too. hot sauce. So All right, guys, games with time to heads. get going. No, wait, we don't do that yet. Uh, Hold on, we have to cut. No, you, that's good. Stop right where you are. Okay. <laughs> and or like five year olds. Now <laughs> don't move. Now you need to cut that onion into cut it long ways into strips. Nope, the other way. It's Just round. be careful not to cut your turn it up on end. Oh First we have 101 of how to cut an onion into strips. I've never cut an onion. But but don't cut your fingers Still because like it could. So Matt, while he's doing that, go ahead and take those strips of onion and just stick them into this mason jar. And then you can so this is a very simple recipe you're going to discover. It actually just takes a few minutes to assemble, and then you're going to put it into the refrigerator for just at least one night before it's ready for you to consume. Where's the deep fryer? we got to make them tasty, right? For those of us who are looking for something healthy, deep fryer is probably not going to go on uh, Onions are pretty right, healthy. Matt, you're doing right? such a good, Matt Thank is you. such a good you, onion dismantler. Is the middle good to eat or no? It's like yellow. Uh, yeah, that's a question I don't have an answer for. Is that for. enough or? Well, you can never have too many pickled onions. That'll right? be it. So that's the first step. Cut the onion into strips. That was easy. And put it in the jar. All right. Very next step is to add in the salt and the sugar. So we have, we're actually using Himalayan salt today. That's oh, why it's wow. pink. Oh, wow. Himalayan. So we need 
two tablespoons of the salt, and P. Allen Smith requests so like one kosher. Tablespoon? Yeah, we're working off of uh, not so accurate measures today, but you know that's that's how we're we're normally work. very precise around here. <laughs> yes. So two, two tablespoons of, of the salt. All right. Next, we need one tablespoon of sugar. Can do that. What do you think, Andy? They smell okay by themselves, but by I don't like texture of the onion. Just one of the sugar. Just one of the sugar. Sorry, I'm yep. Distracting. Okay, so we're done with all the dry ingredients. See how quick and simple this is? See, guys, this is great so far. Yeah, so far, this is great. It's going so far, great. This is great. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Next, we have the red wine vinegar. We got half a cup of red wine vinegar. Go ahead and pour That's that homemade, in. That's homemade, right? That is. We are using homemade red wine vinegar. That's not a requirement. That just happens to be what we have. Um, vinegar, of course, is a key element in any sort of pickling. And then we need to add in about a half to three quarters of a cup of water. We just want to, why don't you just get that so that that mason jar is about halfway full with the water. How long does it take to pickle? Is that like a week process? Well, you know, it is an ongoing process. So the longer that you uh, wait, the more intensity you're going to have, but also you're going to lose crispiness with your onions. So this is the kind of thing that you can enjoy early on crispy. And then later on, you can enjoy them on your sandwiches because they'll be a little bit more limp. Yes, the final ingredient oh. is hot sauce. E easy on the hot sauce. P. Allen Smith recommends three or four drops. Oops. Um, <laughs> Five Kelly, or six will do. Kelly, our traffic manager, did this and actually What'd used hot sauce, and she used more, and it turned out really well for her. And so we had to trust Kelly. Well, all right. Andy, I'm, you I'm can not going to eat it. I'm going to have okay. like a little bite. Okay, final so thing. Just put it. the lid on it. And shake it. You can shake it a little bit. Yep. The hot sauce is sitting on that top onion. <laughs> you can shake it, Andy. Thank you. So look, you get to use the big knife, you get, get to use hot it. sauce, and uh, sugar and salt, very simple. It's gonna be perfect, right guys? All on board with the ingredients, now we're just nervous to try it. Okay, so that was, that's the one that we made today. This is the one that we made yesterday. Take a look at what, what has happened uh, since it just sat for one night. Look at how beautiful that color Take is. Look, Andy. Just get, prepare yourself, that's a, that's a precursor to let you know how incredibly tasty it's going to be. So we got some forks over there. Can I use the knife? Pickled onions. Uh, <laughs> I better not. Pickled onions. Here we go. Oh, man. All right. Try it, Matt. <laughs> Come on, Andy. You can do it. Ugh. Hey, I am impressed with you because you ate the whole onion. Oh, so I don't have to. You know what? Onion. You know, I've been on here a lot saying that I'm not sure if I'm going to like something. Ah. And I actually really think this is good, Andy. No, it's not. Yeah, no, I promise. I told you I like onions, though. Yeah, I don't like onions. It has a very strong aroma, which might turn some off. But honestly, it's, not bad. it's pretty good. Well, you heard that straight from both of them directly. I'll be honest, we, oh. we walked into this segment today, and both guys are like, mm, I'm just not, not sure about this. OK. The vinegar is, it's yeah. like, it's, it's almost like a Permani Brothers coleslaw. Yeah, it's strong. Which is strange. Yeah. All right, there but you got it. Pickled onions from P. Allen Smith's recipe, slightly rearranged from our traffic manager, Kelly Getz. We thank you so much for providing mm. that. And don't forget, you can rewatch this food segment by going to faithandfriends.wtlw.com. You can also get the recipe there, as well as checking out all of the other health segments and recipe segments that we've had in the entire history of TV44's Faith and Friends. All right, that wraps it up for this food segment from Lost Creek Care Center. Back to you, Mark. Well, thank you, Jennifer. We've been telling you about this next event for a few weeks now. Dr. Trudy Pieper is coming to Gifts of Joy in Lima on April the 30th. Copies of her book about cancer prevention will also be available. Maybe you're wondering what this book is all about. Well, Trudy takes a moment to explain prevention is the cure for cancer in five easy steps. If you understand why you get cancer or how it happens, it makes it easier to prevent. And there's two reasons you get cancer. One is that your immune system is not functioning at its level. An immune system is always built by good choices of food. Mm. And the second is that you have free radical damage. So if you put those two together, that equals cancer. So there are lots of things that we can do, but just making some healthy choices that will uh, help our bodies. I love the fact that you've got five key points in here, which we could spend probably the next couple hours talking about. But something else that I think is very practical is you have 30 tips, 30 tips. And let's talk about, we've got 10 of those that we could focus on quickly. Yes. Um, just simple daily changes. 
I, I want to make it easy so everyone can understand that there's something everybody can do. And in the book, there are actually 30 tips, one for every day. So if you do one of these every day of your life, you are going to help prevent cancer. And they're all easy things. The first one is 10 almonds. Eat 10 almonds every day. They have anti-cancer properties, and they're great essential fatty mm -hmm. acids. The next one is garlic. Put some zest into your food. Uh, research shows that it, that it will prevent cancers of the digestive system. Hmm. And here's my favorite, green tea. <laughs> Three glasses of green tea every day inhibits cancer cell growth because of the antioxidants that are in them. Hmm. Smile until your face hurts. <laughs> We forget about how easy it is to smile, but endor uh, smiling makes endorphins, and endorphins boost the immune system to create more T and B cells, which are white blood wow. cells, wow. and will are natural uh, cancer killers in your body. <laughs> Tomatoes, it's garden season. You've got your plants yes. out there, haul those tomatoes in, slice them up and eat them. They contain lycopene, mm. and lycopene uh, cuts the risk of cervical, lung, stomach, and prostate cancers. Prayer warrior, here's the one we all love. Uh, we know we need to pray, this is a reason to pray more. Mm. Praying creates a state of serenity that actually slows cancer growth. Wow. So if there are cancer wow. cells growing in your body, and we all have them, then it will slow that growth just by being that state of, of in communing with God. Wow. And that's, uh, research shows that. <laughs> and then tart cherries, uh, again, a good time of year to pick those cherries and eat them. They're loaded with anthocyanins, which will stop cancers. And here's another one that people um, have a hard time with. It's my white foods. Take a break from white foods. Uh, they cause inflammation. When, what, what do you mean by white foods? White foods are flour, white flour, white sugar, white potatoes, and white rice. <laughs> and the inflammatory uh, causes uh, more free radical damage in your body. Wow. And our final one, and again, because of summer, a good tip is when you're out there grilling your meat, not to let it get burned or charred because it contains chemicals that causes the DNA uh, to change and increases the chance of cancer. Wow, so that's just 10 of the 30 daily suggestions that Dr. Trudy has in this book. Find out more about her book and meet Dr. Trudy in person this Saturday, April the 30th. It's 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Gifts of Joy right here in Lima on Allentown Road. And if you want to glean even more medical information, plan to stick around after the book signing. Jennifer will be conducting a series of health interviews with Trudy that will appear right here on Faith and Friends in the coming months. Is that kind of like a live studio audience? Well, I guess it wouldn't be a studio, <laughs> a live bookstore audience. And they'd be all live, but it wouldn't necessarily be live on television. <laughs> that is true, but it is your opportunity to watch us do a production. We're going to bring our cameras, our lights, all that stuff right into Gifts of Joy. And uh, we hope that doesn't deter you. We won't do that during the book signing. Just later on, we hope that it'll be a lot of fun. Well, we want to take a moment to say thank you for your partnership in the Spring to Life campaign. We're over the halfway mark. But we are coming down with how many days left we have to go. We're continuing through Mother's Day and your support is so very much appreciated. Absolutely, I want to take some time to thank some folks, including uh, Mr. Lynn Trissel from uh, Menden, Ohio, the Toes from Haviland, as well as uh, Ms. Carla Smith from St. Mary's, all becoming part of our partnership team. A thousand dollar gift right here in Lima. Thank you so much, you know who you are. And also a $25 gift from St. Henry. Thanks so much for springing to life with us and continuing the ministry of TV44 all throughout the viewing area. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've been thinking of giving to TV44, now is a great time to do so. No gift is too small nor too large. You can donate securely at WTLW.com, donate by mail or over the phone, as well as in person. Also consider signing up for automatic monthly withdrawal. It's a safe and reliable way to continue to partner with TV44 every month of the year. And now one final look at our scripture. Yeah. Ephesians 6, chapter 6. Chapter 6, verses 16 through 18. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication. I'm praying for you today that you persevere through whatever you're going through and know that God is your strength, He is your shield, and He is your refuge. Have a great day. Thank you.